Okay. All right. Welcome to the School of Wholesaling Show, Sac Passe, Not Boule. I am your host, Luke Madeus, and I am excited for today's episode. Listen, you guys know I only bring the best on the show whenever I bring a guest on the show. And today I have somebody uh, who is not only just great at business, but someone who also is great at walking with God. I had a personal conversation with who I'm bringing on today. And uh, after we talked, we, we just connected so well. And after we talked, uh, we shared this word. And, and I had to ask him, I, I asked him, can you come on the show and just talk about what you do and just share your testimony with others? Because there's in his message is something that is going to bless you, something that's going to help you, and most importantly, something that is going to assist you in getting to where you want to go. Because the truth is, until we know what our true purpose is, we will never approach our walk with enough why, enough reason, enough commitment to really see it through. We got to know who we who we are and why we're created to do what we do. And so this is exactly what uh, this special God, uh, God touched man is going to come on here and talk about. I have none other, the one and only Stephen Walker on the show with me today. And I'm so, I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited to have you here. Stephen, how are you doing today? I am good. And I am honored to be on your show, uh, speaking to your audience and, uh, when you invited, when you gave me the invitation to come and be on your show, you said you would send your private jet to pick me up, and I, it, it landed today. I'm so excited to, to to be a part of what you're doing, brother. You're changing lives, so I'm glad to be a part of that conversation. Awesome, awesome. Listen, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you so much yes. for making up the time to to be a part of the show. Now, for everyone who doesn't know, Stephen, um, what exactly do you do? Could you could you go ahead and share? why uh, everyone on this show should be listening to you right now, because what we're about to get into is going to be packed full of valuable information. And honestly, I feel like we're going to change some lives today just from the conversation that we're going to have. You mind, you mind sharing a little, bit, a little bit about you? Sure. I'm happy to say that I'm learning more and more to do what God tells me to do. Uh, I've been in this business 32 years of helping people find their purpose and walk in their power uh, that God has given us. Uh, everybody that's ever been born has a purpose inside of them. And so uh, part of my job is to help them to bring that out. I do that in a lot of different ways. I have uh, a couple of different companies. Manifest Media LLC is my creative branding and marketing company. Uh, we help build personal brands and launch personal brands, uh, personal brand websites, and, and then global um, digital strategies for our clients. And, uh, and I also have the business side, the business coaching side of that, which is purpose and power. And that's what you were talking about earlier, uh, purpose and power coaching and, uh, through that, what we've learned is that there's there's lots of people, especially coming out of the pandemic, that are suffering with identity. You know, who am I? Why am I here? What's next in my life? And there's those who have been in business and some have made pretty good money, but they're looking for what's next. Like, what do I do now? And there's others that are retiring and and they have a lot of life left in them. And and uh, and you know we you know we get to a point sometimes where we just want to ask that question to God, like what do you want me to do? Like, why am I here? Even as we start growing and scaling our companies, you know, if you're not asking God what he wants you to do with it, then you'll never become all that he wants you to be. Wow. That is, that is so key. That is so key. I, for, I forget who, uh, who said this to me. Um, I, it might've been, I, I don't know if you're familiar with, with who this is, but, uh, he's an elder at the Potter's house church, elder Randall. I'm not sure if you, if you know, who no, he is. Mm -mm. Uh, but he, uh, not, not to get too deep into his story and everything like that, but but essentially what, what he did is he he helped uh, a lot with, he works with athletes and helps them be able to transition from living, you know, living a life where they're, they're, they're playing at the top of their game, the NBA, NFL athletes, right? And then when their time is up, they've got, they've got, a, they've got, a, they got a shift, right? And, and what ends up happening is um, when, when, when they're no longer at the prime at what they used to do because their life is changing, their identity tends to leave with that because their entire life was focused around football or focused around NBA. And they've got to be able to find out, well, what, what, what is my real purpose? Because now that football is over, what do I do? Now that basketball is over, what do I do? And so that's what he does. He, he, helps, he helps athletes have that, that, uh, that, uh, that transition into what their next uh, their next next is, right? And so mm. um, the reason why I, I bring that up is because you mentioned the word identity, right? Identity. And, and, and you know, I, I don't think enough people understand how important it is 
um, to really get clear on what on, on on your identity because your 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 actions and your belief is tied to your identity, right? Exactly. So do, you, do you mind talking a, a little bit about um, about about what it means to walk in your God given purpose? Because I, I feel it's my own personal feeling. I feel that um, in the entrepreneurial world of business entrepreneurial world of being in a business owner a boss whatever you want to put in that line right it's honestly it's a huge walk right with uh with god it really is mm -hmm. it really is it really really is because you know he he, he he puts the desire in us to go and and, and create something that's going to better the world right mm -hmm. and so could you you mind just talking a little bit more about that and why that's even important being an entrepreneur and being a business owner Sure. When it comes down to identity, the real question is, what are you what are you being? Right. Who are you? Right. And so at the core of that, the one thing that we have to come to terms with is, are we being authentic? And there's a couple of states of being we have to be in. We have to be honest. We have to be transparent. We have to be humble. We have to be teachable and we have to be pliable. We have to be able to bend and stretch and, and go as God is leading us. And sometimes we get so rigid as to who we are, what we what we do, and and then what we do is what we've always done, and so that's what it takes you to a place where you actually drift to a stillness, because now you you're too rigid to move. You you think that the way God did it before is the way He's always going to do it, and that's not our God. It doesn't work like that. And so what you got to understand is that we're those who are called to purpose are called to transformation mm. from one stage to another stage to another stage. We go from glory to glory, the Bible says. And it's really shown in nature, actually, when you think about it, because the state and condition of the thing that is being is what limits it to the environment. And I'll give you an example of that. You might find yourself in a place where it doesn't, it's too tight. Like I, I, I can do more. There's more that I want. There's more that I want to do, but you're not moving. And, and I'll tell you why. If you look at a caterpillar, a caterpillar is on the ground. Although it has like eight, 10, 12 legs, it's not moving fast at all. It's literally moving at a snail's pace. But a caterpillar is destined to become something greater. Now, what happens with an entrepreneur is they look in the mirror as a caterpillar and they go, man, I'm beautiful. Look at my colors. Look at my stripes. I got all these feet. I'm moving, man. I'm moving. I'm doing my entrepreneurial thing. But I was on a podcast and the guy asked me a question. It was a great question. He says, why do entrepreneurs never go from being going, go from being an entrepreneur to a business owner? Mm -hmm. Why do entrepreneurs oftentimes never make that transition from entrepreneur to business owner? And I said, because it comes down to one thing, lack of vision. Mm -hmm. What happens is the entrepreneur, like the caterpillar, gets comfortable eating the leaves, crawling at its pace that is going. And this is good. At least I'm getting my bills paid. Everything's good. And sometimes I'm not getting my bills paid, but you know what? I can float to the next paycheck, next check that's coming in. And what happens is they don't realize that they're called to greater and they're called to higher. And the moment they sense that call to higher, they start getting afraid. And that's what pushes this business owner out of their out of their view. I don't want that. Oftentimes we say, if God told me what it would take for me to become what he wants me to be, I would want it. I would tell them I'm fine just where I'm at. I don't want to have to go through the hills and the valleys and the pain and the suffering. But you don't realize that those things are the things that condition you and strengthen you for the journey that's ahead. Any athlete, any soldier that doesn't go through training is ultimately setting themselves up for failure. It's the same thing in business. You have to allow the good and the bad to happen so you can learn from the good and the bad that, so that you can celebrate the good and the bad. But it comes down to understanding that you have a purpose. You're not just alive. Jesus said, I've come that they might have life, you're alive, but that they might have it more abundantly. And that's not just eternal life. That's in this life to fully understand what kind of life you've been called to. And so just like the caterpillar, as you're, as you're going through these phases, even now that you're listening to me, those who are listening to your show, you're beginning to grow. These are some of the things you've never heard before, and it's stretching you, already stretching you. And that's what happens to a caterpillar. It starts to eat so many leaves that the skin gets tight. And it's not able to move as fast. And what it has to do is it has to rest. So it finds a place on the branch up high, away from predators, where it can rest. And you might be in a season of rest. I mean, you might be literally be in a season where nothing is happening. And so in that season, God can cloak you and put you into a cocoon where it's just you and him. 
And that's where transformation occurs. So I'm, I'm gonna go, I could go further, but I, I just want to stop right there. I wasn't even gonna stop you, Stephen. <laughs> was not even gonna stop. That that is that is such a great analogy, man. Like because caterpillar to a butterfly. I, I I agree with you. You know you know what's interesting about that analogy? Caterpillars, right? They stay on the ground, and butterflies fly. Mm-hmm. And you, you, I love how you tie that to the difference of being the the question that you that you received um, was why do you think. Uh, owner operators never become business owners, right? Like like people who are pretty practically self-employed, why aren't they going from, you know, self-employed to running a big business? And you're right, it's, it, it is most most of the time because of vision and, and being able to have the right identity tied to that vision to believe that they can do it and actually do what's necessary. And um, so, so could you dive a little bit more into how, into how, you know, how did you how did you discover your your God given purpose? How did you discover your identity? Could you could you share some uh, a little bit about that? Okay, now you're talking about refinement. See, this is this is the space and place we don't want to go. This is the place of of uh, tribulation. You know, the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered. Mm. And so, if you're a follower of Jesus, and he tells you to pick up your cross and follow me, where are you following him to? Not to heaven. Because that's not where Jesus went after he made that statement. He went to Golgotha, the place of death. So you literally have to re- realize your purpose is to, to, number one, answer the call to follow Jesus, but to be as he is, because the student is not greater than the teacher. If Jesus suffered, we're going to have to suffer, which is why he said in this life, you will have tribulation. And he told us to be of good courage because he's over- overcome the world. But it is through tribulation through suffering that he learned obedience, the scripture says. So what happened to me was I, you know, I had accomplished a lot. I have done a lot. And I got to a place, um, look where I was pretty much like, okay, God, I want more. I want to do more. Right. And, and, um, and so I, I put it out. The Holy Spirit gave me the words to say, I put that, I put the confession out there. You have the power of life and death with your tongue. Mm. I said, father, I realized I don't want my will to be done. I want your will to be done. Anything that is not of you, although I'm a part of all these Bible studies, I'm a, I'm assistant pastor at a multi-campus church. I got, you know, two, three companies that I'm working. I got business deals that I'm doing. You know, all that's great, but I'm sensing that something greater is calling me and I can't see it because all this other stuff is in front of me. And I told him, I said, Father, I said, I want your will to be done. And I said, so whatever it is that you want, you bring that to pass. Your will be done. And one thing at a time started shutting down. And before I knew it, this is what happened. I um, I found myself at home. This is just before COVID. My major source of income, which is I was working with this company called uh, iHeartMedia that owns a bunch of radio stations. And, um, and so I was helping them with digital sales. And so I was performing for them, doing great. And that 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 ended because of COVID. And so that's that income disappeared. And I told I told God, I said, okay. It's just you and me now. And so so I realized in that moment, and this is these are the transitions we have to get you. And if you listen to this, you need to write this down. Man may dictate your paycheck, but God dictates your income. <laughs> wow. I'm going to say that again. Man may dictate your, your paycheck, but God dictates your income. What does that mean? There's no way that a human on this planet can have your destiny in their hands. There's no person on this planet that can tell you their purpose. In order to understand purpose of anything, you have to go back to the manufacturer to get the intent of the manufacturer for your creation. Well, your manufacturer is God, so only God can tell you why you are here. In fact, any question that you ask that begins with with why, only God can answer that because he's the only one that's omniscient. He's the one that's all-knowing. And so we tend to go to people to get answers instead of going to the God who has all the answers. So that's the first thing is God will bring you to a place where you realize I no longer have the answers. He will literally bring you to the end of yourself. And you mentioned that about the sports players. I was going to, I was going to uh, follow up with what you said is what happens a lot of times with, with professional uh, athletes and entertainers when they come to the end of their career or for whatever reason they get hurt now out of their career. Uh, the first thing that, that, that goes when, the, when that ends is their ego. Mm. Their ego has to be destroyed because oftentimes their ego is the idol they've built of themselves. Mm. 
because I am performing. I am making these records. I am the one that's on TV. I am the one that's generating these millions of dollars. I am my brand. And God's like, well, you're going to have to get out of your way in order for me to help you with who you who you really are. And so God would allow that time of humbling. A lot of them lose all of their money, uh, but they gain their life. Mm. Now, look, now think about this. This is the scripture. It says that he that uh, who, he that will save his life will lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake will gain it. And we know the scripture says, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Right. So. So money is not the answer. I know so many millionaires out here that are sad. You know, I actually, I was driving them, uh, with a millionaire and um, his name is Mr. Hoffman. The Hoffman's owned a lot of property up in Washington. He's a Jewish guy. And um, and so I was driving his car and it was a Bentley. And so we were in his car. I was driving and it started raining. And look, this was the day God woke me up. I wanted to, one of the moments where God woke me up. It started raining. And so he hit the uh, windshield wipers and only one of them worked. Mm. And so I'm driving this car is over two hundred thousand dollars, and and I'm looking at the car. First, I was all amazed because you know when you get in, you turn it on, the steering wheel goes down into your lap, it comes towards you, you know, and you it's all of that, right? But with with the with the rain, the rain showed me something that money uh, is a tool, but it's not the end all. Mm-hmm. It's a tool because even with two hundred thousand dollar vehicle, that only one of the windshield wipers work, man. It's just a car. This is just an expensive car. And, and in fact, we know that for ourselves because we'll buy. I mean, I bought brand new cars, man. I bought a Chrysler 300. I cut a sunroof in it. I put a Bentley grill on the front of that thing, man. And for months, I was riding like I was a kingpin of Raleigh, North Carolina. And um, and then after about a year, that car lost its shine. It lost its smell. It wasn't as important as I thought it was, right? And that's what I think God wants us to come to. He needs us to come to an end no matter how much money you've been able to generate. Through your giftings, you need to glorify the God that gave you the gifts. Amen. And he wants to he wants us to be humble back to that point so that we can desire him more than things so that we can start serving him and he can bring us into all things according to his will. Wow. Wow. That's that's such a powerful testimony. And you make a great point uh, because I, I feel like especially especially in the Western society that we live in. Right. Um, and, and I don't believe it's the society's fault. I believe that uh, people have just been um, uh, programmed to 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 think this way. But you know, most people would look at that car and and they would feel like it's it it, it is the end, right? That like that like that is where I'm headed. And and, and in truth, in the reality, uh, the purpose of business is honestly to serve other people, right? That's, mm. that's that that is that is the foundation purpose of business. Why is that the foundation and purpose of business? It's because at a foundational purposeful level, the first thing that God asked us to do as human beings was to take care of what he gave us dominion over, which is mm-hmm. could be translated into business, that can be translated into real estate, right? Uh, fill in the blank. But whatever it is that we have dominion over, that is our that is our responsibility. It is our job, right, to take care of that thing. So when we think of a business, business is nothing more than um, than you fulfilling what God has put in you to serve other people and the the results of that, all the money, right? The fancy cars, the houses, that's, that just shows you how well you are at doing what you do. <laughs> exactly. That's a product of your gift. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, the, the reason why Amazon is, is and, you know, the reason why Jay Bezos is in, uh, in uh, Elon Musk, but the reason why those two are the, are the, what, the richest men in the world right now is only because the businesses that they've established and created to be successful are serving the world at such a large level. It feels such a big need, which is why, you know, they're valued at such a high value. You could, and you can look at that at any company, right? And so, and so yeah. the, reason, the reason I share that with you is, uh, and with the audience is because at the, at the end of the day, it just, it's just to prove your point, Stephen, that at the end of the day, in order for you to truly be even able to do that well, to do business well, to serve people well, you've got to truly know what it is you've got to give to the world. And mm. God, and God is, is who puts that in, who puts that in us. And so um, this is such a powerful testimony. Now, uh, I, I, I just want to share this with you as well, Stephen. Most of the people that are listening to, to us right now, um, they are people who uh, they want to get started in real estate or maybe they're already in real estate. They want to improve their businesses. Uh, most of the people are, are most likely uh, 
working on their businesses alone, right? They're not at that part yet where they built a big business. They're kind of doing the whole self-employed thing. Uh, most of them as well have 95s, right? So just giving you an idea of who, who you're speaking with. But everybody here that is listening to the sound of our voices, all of them want and desire to build a real estate business. Um, but even with that, I tell, I tell everybody this all the time. I tell my mentees this. I tell people I get the opportunity to speak with who ask me about real estate. They, they, they always ask me, hey, well, what does it take to get in real estate? My first question to them is, before we get into what you need to do and how much money you need to have and all that and all, all of the juicy stuff, I got a question for you. Why are you even doing this? What is exactly the right. outcome for you? That's mm. got to be clear. Like you said, it's that vision, right? That vision has to be super clear. So, so let, me, let me ask you something. For somebody right now who is um, maybe, maybe this person, because there's two types of people I listen to you right now, people who are just getting started and, and then another person who has already gotten started, they've seen some success in the business and maybe they're plateauing. Maybe, 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 maybe their goal was just to get going. Now they've gotten going, but now they don't know where to go from here. Um, mm. could, you, could you speak to that person just a little bit? Uh, when somebody plateaus in their business, you know, they had all this ins insatiable desire, this, this purpose, their, you know, this fulfillment, and now they've kind of gotten to a level of mastery with it. And so now they're, you know, they're, they're losing that, 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 uh, uh, that, uh, that, that spark. What, what, what would you say, what would you say to that person? What, 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 what do you think um, would be helpful for a person like that? Well, I think the, the first thing is to, to realize that that feeling uh, is there to help you. That's an instinct. That's not a problem, actually. That's something that's going to help you. Because if you're at a place where you plateaued and you feel like I can't move forward from here, that means either you haven't done something you should have done and you got to go back and fix that, or there's something you need to learn now in order to step over what you're in front of. So the plateau is only there to let you know that up until this point, the knowledge I have gained and the energy that I've given have gotten me to this point. And I cannot go any further. So either you're calling, you're calling up and you're looking for mentorship and coaching, uh, or you need a mentor and coach to have you look backwards to see where you might have taken a misstep. Oftentimes what will happen is you'll, you'll lose something on the way. Uh, let's just say, for example, you're driving down the road and um, you, uh, your lights go out on your car. And you got to pull over the side of the road. Well, it's nighttime. So when you get out, it's dark. So what do you need? You need a light. If you go in your trunk and you pull out your flashlight and it has no batteries, whose fault is that? It's yours because you knew you were going on a trip. There was something you left behind. You left, you grabbed the light, but you didn't grab the batteries. And so someone can come because the reality is we don't know what we don't know. And that's why we need coaches, mentorship, leadership. you right. We need those who have gone before us and go, you know what? I have pulled over and looked for my flashlight and realized I didn't have batteries, right? So I know what I need to do. And that's why I can tell you what you need to do. And that's the, that's the purpose. The other thing too, is that, you know, when you're in real estate, you know, you're building something, right? And um, what you got to realize is that it comes down to capacity. Have you built beyond your ability? And that's the problem. Have you gotten to a place where you, you have no more capacity and you got to be really honest with yourself. And it goes back to where you started. The way you start is the way you're in. If you started by lying to yourself, for example, I'm getting into real estate to build a legacy for my family. I want to have generational wealth. Well, that sounded really nice, but really I got into real estate because I want to make money and I want to make a lot of money because I want to spend a lot of money right now. What happens is as I start getting into real estate and getting a deal closed and using that money to flip and get another deal, now I got two deals going and I'm flipping and I'm partnering and I got a bigger deal. Now we got an apartment complex and now I'm at a place where I have this money. What happens is when that money comes, I start realizing, hey, look, I think I've gotten all the money I want. I'm good. But what about your legacy? What about generational wealth? You lied to yourself. You're, the way you started was wrong. And now you hit a place where you realize, at my core, I haven't been honest with myself. I've gotten to a place where I said, this is enough. And that's a place where either, either you will make a change in your heart to go, wait a minute, I need to fight for something greater than myself, which is, you know, that selfishness is dangerous because you can also get destroyed by that. Uh, but you can say, you know, or you can start doing what you do. You can say, you know, what? I've, I've had so much success maybe my next step is helping others be successful. So now maybe I take my money and build a platform and a structure so that I can bring people in and then I'll help them become successful. And then I'll just be an investor on their deals. So now I don't have to put out a lot of energy. I just got to give wisdom, right? So either way, you have to clearly define what it is that's challenging you right now and get to the core of that, because that will give you direction to where you're going next. 
Wow, that's that's so good. And, and that kind of reminds me of your analogy a little earlier about the butterfly, uh, about the uh, caterpillar and the butterfly, right? Um, some it, it kind of sounds like to me from what from what you're sharing, right? That that someone who is going through an experience like that with where they're plateauing, it's an opportunity to 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 uh, to transform, right? To transform into what their next actually really looks like. And uh, and that's that that's so good. That's so powerful, man. That's and so let, let me tell you something about that. So the caterpillar, this is the thing. What people don't realize is that the caterpillar represents r- represents something in nature that's rarely seen. And what we're talking about is the caterpillar doesn't uh, go up on the branch and get in cocoon and then breaks out of cocoon and then wings come out of the caterpillar. That's not what happens. What happens is that caterpillar, the whole structure of the caterpillar. Uh, um, separates and it becomes something new. And so when it comes out of the cocoon, it's already something new. It doesn't have to try to become something new once it comes out. And that's the purpose of trials and tribulations. See, see this, this is the reality is that those who are in Christ, we realize that we might make mistakes. We might, you know, if you're in real estate, you might lose the deal. Like, for example, I was in commercial real estate with Colliers International. And, um, and so one of my first deals was $2 million for a church. Uh, getting a building. So I got excited, like, okay, I'm gonna move through and this is going to be amazing. And so I was, I was in school at the same time. So my big had to help me with that deal. Uh, my broker in charge had to help me with that deal. And so, so anyway, so I'm in school. And when we got to the law part, one of the things that my, my teacher, my instructor said to me is, well, to the class, is, he said, now, you know, I, I need to be honest with you. This is what happens in real estate, because I've always been in sales and marketing. So I'm like, I'm gonna kill this. This is gonna be amazing. He said, this is, but there's a little difference when it comes to real estate. He said, for example, you know, I misquoted the square footage of a house. Mm-hmm. The owners took me to court and the judge ruled against me. And I had to pay $10,000 of my own money out because of my mistake. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like what? And, and, and the education is what helped me not to make the mistake. Yeah. This is what happens with entrepreneurs that are growing and wanting to get into something. They don't want the education. They want the outcome. Ooh. Ooh. They don't want the education. They want the outcome. And because of that, they'll either do one or two things. They'll buy the outcome mm. or they'll shortcut to get to the outcome. Now, let me tell you the danger of both of those. When you buy the outcome, the person who you down paid to help you get that success is the one that's successful, not you. Mm-hmm. Because the moment they leave, you can't duplicate what they did. So now, now you're in trouble. Second thing is when you take a shortcut to get to anywhere, you miss the journey it takes to keep the thing you're going to get when you get there. So now you, you've you inherited these properties. You got these properties, but you don't know what to do with them, and you don't know the laws around them, and you don't know the pit, the, the traps, and you don't know how to handle it at all. And, and so the thing that you thought was going to be your blessing actually becomes your curse and destroys you. Wow. You know, this. there's a there's a saying that my one of my mentors uh I would say, uh, he would say, microwave success isn't success, mm-hmm. right? And that's what came to my mind when you share that what was a microwave, right? And 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 I, and I think that uh, especially in the Western society that we live in, you know, a lot of people are going for that microwave success, right? They they want to mm-hmm. and now they want to fast, but there's no real foundation to any of that. And uh, and it's so interesting because you mentioned you could buy that, you could buy the success. Right. Or you can try to shortcut it. Both of them will end will, will put you in a place where, you know, you're, you're going to end up in the empty handed because you have no there, there's there's no there's no uh, there's no content in, within what you did. Right. There's there's no foundation. There's no structure. And, and look, that can be built over time through actual experience. You yeah. Through- and look, and look, the, the problem isn't in the process. The problem is in the person. Hmm. Because what they'll say is, oh, I chose the wrong process. I tried to buy it. Oh, I, try, I chose the wrong process. I try to shortcut. The process is not the problem. It's the person. Why? Because it is you that are looking to cheapen the value of the journey so that you can get there quicker because you want to look successful instead of being successful. Wow. There's a difference. Wow. And you, you know, to, to your point, Stephen, um, when this podcast started, so in, in, in 20, what is it? 2020 was the pandemic. In 2020, right? Um, I was featured in New York Weekly because I've had the opportunity to bl- to help people who lost their job, pivot into real estate, make money, and start their businesses, right? And so what's, what, the reason why I'm sharing that is because 
I just want to shed some light on what you said earlier, which is the power of mentorship. We don't know what we don't know what we don't know what we don't know. Mm-hmm. How this podcast actually started is through practicing exactly that. I, I hired a mentor. I paid him $25,000, wired him the whole thing in cash, right, to help me with this because I did not want to. I, the reason why I did that is because this, first off, it was new for me. I, I did not know how to start a podcast. I didn't need, at that time, I had no idea what it meant to be a speaker. I had no idea what, like, I was afraid of speaking on stage, right? I just wanted to help people with my knowledge. Mm-hmm. So I hired somebody who can help groom me, who can also show me what I did not know before I got to, uh, before I got started. So that way I had the easiest path to my own success, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now, now, the reason why we're both here is because I decided to invest that money. And the interesting thing about that, I've had experience, I have, I have experiences with both. I have experiences where I've, I've tried things on my own with no mentor. And I've had experiences where I've tried things with the mentor. And I've got to say 100% of the time, I save more money with the mentor. Now, there's probably somebody listening to, to this right now and probably thinking to themselves, how did you possibly save money spending $25,000 on a mentor? Well, here's, here's the case. Do you know how much money you could lose, right? Doing it on your own. I have a testimony. I have a testimony, right? So here's the first time this, well, not first time, but this, here's one of the times where I did not hire a mentor. And mind you, I was already in a pattern of hiring mentors for everything. I had a real estate mentor, paid him $25,000 a year to mentor me on real estate. I had mentors for almost everything except this one area. I was getting into a new business venture. I trusted a friend, got into this new business venture did not seek any expert advice from anyone who was in the, who was in the industry. I just trusted in somebody. I invested mm. over 45 grand and lost the entire thing. Now, oh my gosh. if I would have hired a mentor, okay, they might've charged me $20,000, 25 grand, but I would have pocketed the other 20 and would have been able to invest that and make a return, right? Because I simply do not know what I do not know. And honestly, that was the best lesson I learned. I just want to make sure this is clear. I didn't lose anything, y'all. Okay, I didn't lose anything. It's just a little bit of money. You're going to get it right back. You just stay consistent, right? Because what I gained from that was a million dollar lesson that would help mm. millions of dollars in the future. And that's already been paying dividends. That four, that $45,000 that I lost already got already doubled it from yeah. the lessons that I learned in that experience. Right. So Absolutely. I just wanted to share that, you know, the, the importance of a mentor of mentorship. And so speak, speaking of which, right, I know that there's a lot. Well, of- no, no. Be, before you move on, this is this is important. That's why people can trust you as a real estate coach. Hmm. But you just said that whole thing that you just said, how you were open, you were transparent. Remember, I told you these are qualities you must have if you're going to be a business owner. You're demonstrating that for them. And you're saying that through those lessons, I've learned what I can now teach. It's not something you've read. It's not something that you learned from another real estate coach and you're just regurgitating. This is your life experience traveled on your road to purpose. And now when you speak to people, it's genuine and it's real and you got the receipts for it. Wow. Yes, that's true. That's very true. That's very true. And, and you know, to, to segue, um, I want to ask you something, man. Is, this, is, is it okay if I ask you a, a, a person? Oh, no, this is. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, so th- the question I have for you, Stephen is um well let, let me lay down the foundation behind the question first right so here's the foundation i'm laying a little bit earlier in the conversation you mentioned about having god in your business right having god in your life of course but also having god in your business um there was uh, elder randall i never got to, to, to my full point with him elder randall mentioned to me that god is a senior partner in in your business right so he helped me to see that just how Uncle Sam is a silent partner in our businesses, wanting a cut for nothing, for, for doing nothing in our businesses. God, who actually does do something in our businesses, right, is our senior partner. And, and I never looked at it that way until he said that to me. But I wanted to just shed the light on that because I wanted to ask you, how important is it to have that perspective in your business and understanding that, that, uh, that, you really, that, that God really is a part of everything you do in your business? And when you have that understanding, how does it how does it change how you approach business? Great question. Um, I think the first thing you got to realize is that those who are called by God to this earth to represent him. Are not just to represent him in the word of God, in scripture and in church, we are called to have dominion over the earth. This is why we're here. We're here to have dominion over the earth. And dominion is given to those who have been given responsibility and given 
purview over property and things, right? You only can be a king and if you have a land to be a king over. The reason why we are to have dominion is because that's where Jesus came to restore back to us. Because Adam had dominion over the earth. It was taken when he fell. Having dominion is important because you start to realize that this was given to me by someone greater than me. Now, if you're not approaching your business as if something, as if God gave this to you, then it's your business. Mm -hmm. Just be honest about it. it. This is your company. This is your business. God is an afterthought. He's the thought when you're in trouble, you call on him when you need him. But this is your project. This is yours. So everything that happens is your fault, period. Now, when you approach this thing and when you have the heart change and the mindset change to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, maybe I've been going about this all wrong. Wait a minute. The gifts that God has given me, he's given me to do one thing. Same thing Jesus said. I must be about my father's business. Mm. Now, that's important because people will tell, tell you, well, that just means that Jesus was like, you know, he's the Lord. So he went about doing the Lord's work. All right. That's who he was called to be. Who are you called to be? Because that's your work in the Lord. If God has put you in the area of real estate, then that's where you're supposed to have dominion. If God has put you in the dominion of finances, that's when you're supposed to have dominion. If God has put you in that area that you're in, whether you are working for a company or you have a business, a flower shop, a cake shop, it doesn't matter. Whatever business you're in, it is God's business. And if it's not, you need to close it down and start again. Mm. Wow. wow! I mean, really, you, you got to do it. I myself have started five companies in my lifetime. One company almost got me arrested by the FBI. I was running so hard. I had five partners and we were just trying to make this thing happen. And we flew, we went all the way out to Colorado to meet with this huge company. It's a company full of lawyers. Y'all know them. It's called Prepaid Legal. And uh, and I was never in Prepaid Legal. But, but our company was going to partner with them to do this huge thing that we're working on. And it just so happens that one of the guys that were brought in that I didn't know was under investigation by the FBI. He had come out of Washington and one of my partners brought him in. And we were sitting at the table with, 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 with all their executives. And they said, look, we love you guys. We love everything you're presenting. But this guy right here is under investigation by the FBI. You better separate yourself from him. I shut that company down. Wow. Look at God. Because we were, we were running so hard we couldn't see. Yeah. And, and the enemy loves that. And so that's why I said that it's better for you to, to shut a company down and, and reassess uh, what God's called you to rather than to spend the rest of your life going the wrong direction and be held accountable in the day of judgment before the Father. Wow. Why is that important? Because you could say, you know what, I'm going to start this company and I got, I got employees and we're doing great and I'm making money. And then when you die, God says, you know what, but I didn't call you that. I called you to this and you would have had five times the employees and you would have had greater impact for my kingdom. Whatever it is God's called you to is the most important thing you could ever do in your life. And that's why it's important. And even in our platform, what we do is purpose and power is because you must define what your true purpose is. And you must be, like I said, pliable. You must be you must be humble enough to say, I'm going to make some adjustments so that I can get in the right position to do what God's called me to do, because that's what you're going to be accountable for. If you are a Christian, if you're following Christ and if you're not, go do whatever you're going to do. It doesn't matter anyway. You're going to die and go to hell because Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. So that's unfortunate. Our prayer is that you would come to know him as Lord and Savior and you could truly understand why you were created because only God can tell you why you were created. And when you find purpose, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about money. You know why? Because purpose is more important than profit. Amen. Purpose is more important than profit. So however big or small you're going to get in your life, as long as you're walking in purpose, you're going to be okay with that. And your life will be good, filled with joy and happiness because you're doing what you're called to do. And every day you wake up, it is your purpose that is waking you up. And that's the right perspective. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, this has been absolutely just energetic and powerful. And I just want to know, and I want the audience to know as well, right? It, as we can see from our conversation, Stephen, it is extremely important that as we walk our walk in life, our, our, our experience of what our lives are going to be, it is important that we walk in the in alignment with what God's purpose for us is, right? With, with yes. the creator. Um, and now, 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 this is why. Because when purpose is not understood, abuse is inevitable. Hmm. Miles Monroe said that. When your purpose is not understood, abuse will occur in your life. 
And a lot of us feel the abuse. We feel like we're not where we need to be and we're suffering because of that. So go ahead. I just want to put that in there. <laughs> wow. I mean, I want to know for the people who are listening to the sound of our voices right now, Stephen, how can they get in contact with you now that they know that they need to know what their purpose is? Because I, because I feel, you know, when we were talking before, you, you asked me what I do and all that, I, and, I, and I share with you what I do. I, and my belief is that every single person, no matter what walk of life they're in, no matter what their, their purpose really is, whether it is to be a baker or to be, uh, to have a flower shop or to be a coach and a mentor or to be just in real estate, regardless of what that is, everyone does need to invest in real estate. It's a part of our kingdom mandate, right? I got that. That's back. right. That's right. <laughs> Come on. And so, and so, and so, but it's, it's one thing to say that I, I've also, because I've also noticed people who I've gotten the opportunity to, to work with, who if I'm gonna be honest, that didn't make it, man. And, 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 and I believe that the reason why they didn't make it wasn't because they weren't capable. It wasn't because they didn't have the right plan. It wasn't even because they, they didn't have a mentor. Right, but it's because he truly did not understand their God-given purpose. Because when you have purpose, it makes everything else make sense, right? Um, so, so one of the people that I'm working with now, he's a pastor, and the reason why he's getting into real estate is because he wants to do more pastoring. So, what am I saying here? Real estate can enable you to have the type of financial, uh, uh, um, what I'm looking for, financial um, foundation where you can buy your time, free up your time, right? Business in general can do this, but, but real estate is very powerful for this. You can build wealth through it, but most importantly, you can develop a type of life financially where you can focus on the, your true purpose more and less on money, right? And so mm. plenty of people who invest in real estate who, who, who are not, you know, real estate professionals. There's plenty of people who are athletes, who are, who are entertainers, right? Plenty of people who are business owners in other industries, tech, right? That, that, that do what they love, their God-given purpose, but then they take their money and they invest in the real estate to create that foundational uh, uh, foundation uh, for you know cash flow and all that, that takes care of them so they can do more of what they love. Sure. And, and, if, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, look up, look up companies like, um, you, know, you know a great company to, to, to look into this? Uh, McDonald's, Ray Kroc, <laughs> right? Ray Kroc, what business That's are you? Right. He, he is not a burger man. He's not a burger man. He's a real estate man is what he is. Hey, man. And you know what's interesting about that, right? Um, it, 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 it's, 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 see, McDonald's business plan is so unique and, and honestly it's inspiring because McDonald's was able to figure out something. McDonald's figured out a great business strategy, which is selling burgers, right? They, were, they, they sell great burgers, which I mean, at the time when they were open, great burgers, but they, they, they serve the community in a way that other fast food companies don't. And, and that's why they're so great. But the other thing is, like you said, they're in the business of real estate. So they know to purchase, to place their McDonald's on certain streets and certain avenues where they're gonna get the guaranteed business because it's right there, right? And all the rest of it is just national marketing. So you know what the logo means and you wanna go eat every time you see it, right? And so, and so it's, it's, very, it's very beautiful because behind the scenes though, the way that McDonald's is set up is it's set up as a bunch of franchises, right? So McDonald's understands that that it can grow as a company by providing other people opportunities, right? To to have a business that model that works, but then owns the real estate which they collect which they collect rent off of. Okay, so really, they've mastered something that is absolutely amazing, and. I wanted to share that simply because I feel like that's where a lot of people are in their businesses. They don't really know what business that they're really in. And mm. the other side to that too is when you know and understand your purpose, you can be like McDonald's. You, you, can, you can take what you're really good at, whether that's doing hair or whether that is starting a landscaping company and just keep in the back of your mind that at the end of the day, I should be in real estate. Let me give you an mm. example. Okay. Let's say that you are somebody who is, uh, maybe maybe you have, a, a a a hair company right well what if what if what if your goal was to purchase a building where you can have a suite like a like a salon suite where you can have multiple hair companies in there multiple spas and salon and, and salons in there and you're getting you're collecting rent but your business is in there too right mm -hmm. and now you become a marketer right now all you got to do is bring business to, to the establishment i mean i mean there's, there's that's there's, a great idea right um but the key component in that though is still real estate and the 
and, and here's the beauty. This is the reason why I love McDonald's business model so much because they don't have to run the they don't have to actually run any of the any of the any of the buildings. Their franchisees are doing that, right? They're managing those companies. And the, on the other hand of that, since they're in the business of real estate, they're collecting rent, yes. But make, that McDonald's bill is going to be there for how long? 10 years, 20 years, mm. 10, 20, 30 years later, how much is that plot of land going to be worth? Goodness. And collect the check on that at the end of the day. Wow. That's the power. You know, I, and I tell you, it, it comes down to one word, ownership. It's about ownership. Because the franchisee and the franchisor, they do not own that location. McDonald's Corporation owns that land, that location, right? And even like LeBron James, right? So LeBron, like if you if you think about franchises, like so so let's talk about basketball. Okay. LeBron, I think the last time I looked, he makes he makes over forty seven million per year, right? Forty seven million per year per year. I had someone tell me, man, LeBron is one of the greatest, and he is, and he's making man, he's making a lot of money. He's making forty seven million. That's great. And I said, no, that's not great. It's not great. What do you mean it's not great? I said, what's great is the person that's paying him. Mm. If he's getting paid $47 million, how much is the person paying him getting paid? Who's the owner? <laughs> and that's where we miss it. We have to get to a place where we understand the power of ownership gives us the real leverage to do the things we need to do in this world. Uh, not employee, because LeBron's an employee. Okay, He's an employee. And he's doing great. He's, I'm not taking anything from him. He's smart. Like Shaq, people... People get on Shaq, you know, Shaq, you know, because, you know, like they said, Shaq in the fool. You know, you looked at the clips and Shaq used to be wild. But this is the thing. Shaq owns more companies than most NBA players. And people don't know that. Magic Johnson, same thing, because they understand ownership. You take your money and let your money be the tool to leverage ownership. And that's what gives you legacy and longevity uh, that you need. And so what you're teaching is generational change, man. This is transformative. The other thing, too, is people who don't make it. They don't make it because they didn't intend to make it to begin with. And people say, well, what do you mean? Well, this is what it means. If I have invested in your company, and like, let's just say you're my coach. If I have invested as you being my coach, then if I do what you say, I should get what you say I can get. Absolutely. I mean, if I do what you say, I should get what you say I can get. Now, if I don't get it, that means I either didn't do what you said or what you said was a lie. Now, how do I know if what you said is a lie? I can look at your own work. Did you do what you said? Now, if I checked you and I do my due diligence and I'm vetting you and I'm getting all the references, making sure you're legit, before I give you my $25,000, $50,000, I'm going to make sure that's the case. And if you have had success, then I'm talking to the people that you work with and I, and I ask them one question. What did you do to be successful? Nine times out of 10, they're going to say, I did exactly what he said. Now, you can't get a coach and do 50% of what I say and then, because as a business coach, that's one of the challenges even with me is that as I'm coaching people through marketing and branding and expansion, as I'm taking them through that those steps, if they only listen to 50%, then 50% of the problems that are going to come are going to be 100% of their fault mm. because they change something. They change the formula. You, you, the reason why you hire a coach, the reason why you have a teacher is to teach you because you're learning. And if you're learning, you're going to be humble and receive lessons so you can grow. That's the reason why Michael Jordan was as good as he was. That's why... Even Kobe, Kobe, man, and I, Kobe wasn't one of my favorite players when he was alive. But after he died, I watched some clips and I heard him say this to him, himself. You can see the video clips of Michael Jordan moving and him side by side with Kobe on the, in a different game. But Kobe's moving exactly like Michael. It's amazing. It's like a shadow because he learned through what Michael was doing, what to do. And that's why they eventually became friends, which was rare in the NBA for Mike to be friends with anybody. But you can see before he died, him and Mike were friends, man. They were close because the greatest form of flattery is imitation. Yeah. Mike loved the fact that Kobe was imitating him and doing it to perfection. But Kobe had what's called work ethic. He focused his work and his ethic in one direction, being diligent to do what he was told to do to be successful. And he did it. He showed up early. He showed and he played late. He showed up early before games, hours before the game start, taking shots. He played the game, and then he come back, and he played at night, and he practiced at night. But this is the thing. People aren't willing to work because they want the shortcut. Yeah. You got to be honest with yourself. Am I looking for shortcuts, a quick fix? I want some quick money. Because if that's the case, I'll be honest with you. If that's the case, that's not a bad thing because then you can take that $100,000 and go like, Luke, here, 
Give me two projects you're working on. I'm going to invest 50000 in each one of them, and let's partner on this project. And you can sit back, silent investor, let Luke do what he does, make you money. That's nothing wrong with that. But just know when the next guy comes that has a has a million dollars and says, look, I want you to work on these projects, he might leave you because that's a million dollar project. So, you know, he's, he's got to go where the money is, right? Where the people are investing the most. But the point is, as long as you're willing to, to be honest with yourself, you can be honest with Luke, you can be honest with me as a business coach to say, this is where I am, this is what I'm looking for, and we can help you get there. But you got to have clarity of vision and you got to have humbleness of spirit and you can get there. Wow. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, Stephen. Listen, this is, I can, I know that this episode here is by far one of the most powerful episodes uh, I've recorded. And, and it's simply because what we're, what we're talking about today is, is the essence of what it means to be in business and the essence of what it means to be successful is really getting really, really clear on what our God given identity and purpose really is and walking within that purpose and seeing it all and just seeing it all unravel, right? It's already done. Mm -hmm. but what we're doing is we're just experiencing it unravel, right? And yeah. so um, thank you so much again for coming on here. And to your point, right? Of course, I know that that uh, we, we've dropped so much on the, on the audience today. And I'm sure that someone here, now that they uh, have discovered uh, what they need, I know somebody here is, is wondering themselves, you know, what is my God-given purpose? You know, mm -hmm. maybe it is real estate. Maybe it's not real estate. Um, either way, I, I know I need to do real estate, but, but what is my God given purpose? What is that purpose so I can bring in that untapped energy into what I'm doing here so I can accomplish what I, what I, what I need to do and get to my next level? How can they get with you, Stephen? How can they get with you so they can get assistance with that and get help just being able to, to finally discover what that is? Well, they can actually go to my website. It's already on the screen, Manifest Media LLC. Uh, dot com. You can go to the website. You can look through it and see all of our services, client testimonials. And then if, if you see anything there that you want, want help with uh, from the branding and the marketing advertising side or the business coaching side, you can schedule a meeting with me and uh, we can sit down and talk. There's a I have a different meetings there, different costs, but I'll actually do this for free for your listeners. So make sure you let me know that you are uh, you're coming from Luke, that, that you heard me on the podcast and that you, you want to get your free 30 minute session. Uh, and it is the launch my global brand session. So make sure you click that that option and uh, go ahead and get it scheduled, uh, schedule a meeting. And I'm just doing it through. Matter of fact, I'll make it good for the next two weeks. Next awesome. two weeks. If you schedule within the next two weeks, it's going to be free. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, take advantage of that, everybody. Take advantage of that. Run to it. I have personally had a session with Stephen. Absolutely blew my mind. And, and, and just change the way that I approach my business. And I know it's that he'll do the same for you. So definitely take advantage of the free session with Steven. And of course, as you already know, right? If, you, if you're ready to go to the next level in your real estate business, you're ready to, 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 uh, to, to do this with a mentor, with a coach, with some guidance instead of on your own, then you can also go to swcontent.com and you could uh, join our next challenge or our next five day workshop, or you can book a call with me directly and we could talk about some mentorship coaching options. Whatever you need, we're here to help you. But most importantly, I want you, I want you to go to Steven. Right? I, I, if you're somebody right now who is wondering and, and just, and you feel like you're in the dark about what your identity is and what you should be doing, go to Steven. Okay, get some help. It doesn't make sense to stand in the dark by yourself and just hoping and wishing it's all going to take care of, of, of itself. Because the reality is, as one of my mentors who I paid over 25 grand a year to, uh, <laughs> he, as he says, he always tells me, he says, God moves when you move. So mm. the question for you is, are you ready for God to move? Mm. And if you are, yeah. all you have to do is book a call. All right. That's so, it. So thank you so much again, Stephen. It has been absolute. I mean, I'm so fired up. I am so right. excited right now that we've had this praise opportunity God. To, to, to share with everybody. Absolutely. Praise God. Praise God. And I thank you again, Stephen, for, for taking out the time to be in here with all of us. I really do. And uh, and, and uh, I want to say uh, blessings to everybody who's listening to this show right now. Blessings to you, Stephen. May God continue to walk with you. May God continue to drip his oil all over you. That it may drip praise all Lord. who are connected to you. And may you continue to do god's work living in the purpose that he has for you and uh and again thank you so much for being here thank you i appreciate it and i want people to join you in your kingdom mandate to take over this reclaim this earth you guys need to join in and, and, and help get that land back from the enemy uh and definitely luke can help you do that so make sure you get serious about it and, and join his, his program 
Awesome, awesome. Thank you again, Stephen. That's it for the right. show. Thank you for everybody listening in today. I hope that you have had a breakthrough like none other on this episode here with me and none other, Stephen Walker. You know what to do. Until next time, I'm Luke Madez. Au revoir.